Okay, so I think we're live now. Um, hello, everyone. Um, for, thank you for joining us today, wherever you may be. Um, I'm Stephanie Bailey, Editor-in-Chief of Ocula, and I also oversee the Conversations Program for Art Basel in Hong Kong. Um, once again, thank you for coming. Um, before I introduce the talk and the panelists, just and to allow for a little more time for people to join us on Zoom, I'll briefly turn to some housekeeping. Um, this week we have simultaneous translation into Mandarin and Japanese, so you can choose your preferred audio channel by pressing the button at the bottom of your screen, um, where you'll also find the Q&A function to raise any questions, and we'll try to respond to as many of those as we can um, towards the end of the talk. Okay, so without further ado, I'm honored to introduce three fantastic voices from Tokyo. Um, Mamika Taoka is director of, the, of Tokyo's Mori Art Museum, an institution that describes itself as the cultural heart of the city. Um, Mami joined Mori in 2003 and became its director in January this year. Um, among other institutional positions, Mami was international curator at the Hayward Gallery in London from 2007 to 2009 co-artistic director of the 2002 Guang, uh, 2012 Guangzhou Biennale and artistic director of the 2018 Biennale of Sydney. Junko Shimada, after working as an editor in Japan, left for New York to study in the late 1980s. And during her time there, Junko worked for 303 Gallery and Gavin Brown, returning to Tokyo in 1997 to open her gallery, Side 2. Um, and the gallery has since developed a program that platforms international artists um, who have not previously shown in Tokyo, um, such as Rikrit Tiruvani, and has since introduced contemporary um, Japanese artists to the roster. Koji Nakao is a collector and the CEO of art management Shimanami, as well as being um, a collector and patron. Uh, Koji also supports the activities of art based Momoshima, an art center spearheaded by artist Yukinori Yanagi that opened in a former school on the island of Momoshima in the Sito Inland Sea in 2012. And Yanagi is best known for his ants farm installations such as Pacific, which is housed in the Tate collection and consists of um, 40, 45, I think it is, plastic boxes that have national flags um, represented in colored sands that has the markings of the ant communities that once resided in the work. So, um, as you all know, the Yokohama Triennial, which opened this month, is one of the first major art events to open since the onset of the global pandemic. And we wanted to take this moment to look at what's happening in Tokyo and the wider art scene in Japan, um, thinking about Yokohama's launch as a reflection of how the show must go on, as we all know it has to. And Mami, actually, we can begin with you because um, we know that the Mori Art Museum is actually preparing right now to open um, on the 31st of July um, with the major exhibition stars. So I think um, to maybe start the conversation, I wonder if you could sort of walk us through uh, the experience of navigating or leading the museum actually through this time from closing um, at the end of February towards opening now. Yes, thank you. And thank you for having me this evening. Um, actually, we closed the museum in uh, February, February 29th, and uh, reopening on the 31st of July, meaning that we have closed for five months. And uh, so I have been a director of a closed museum for that long. And uh, <laughs> um, it, I, I think everything was first experience that we have to close the museum in this reason. And uh, one of the first thing that we did was to launch uh, a, media, a digital program and called the MAM Digital, because uh, immediately I thought we needed to be keep connected with the, our audience, but we had nothing really prepared and we didn't have much content to be able to uh, use it for the digital program. So immediately I collected different people from different departments, from curators, marketing and learning, and uh, this uh, quick made digital group work together and see what we can do. So uh, we launched some sort of a program in early May and uh, pre-screening of uh, uh, mom screen that we are starting uh, in two days. 
and uh, we did a uh, 3D walkthrough of the exhibition called the Arts and Future, which was closed one, one month prior to the actual closing. And then we started to do this artist cookbook, which was only for social media, but it was extremely popular. And uh, so all these different things we just tried. But at the same time, uh, logistically, we needed to see how we could realize this STARS exhibition. And uh, at that time, because the uh, Art and, and Future Show was still in the gallery, and uh, end of March, the dates for that show ended, but nobody could come in to de-install. So we had to keep entire show just in the gallery for two, three more months. Wow. And then only after June, people started to come back to the office and then all these installer also came back. And then we started also investigate what is the earliest date that we could uh, open the show. And uh, we had to work, uh, we had to install with reduced number of people. And then also we looked at uh, our flight schedule and because we had a Japan Airlines sponsorship, we had to use the Japan Airlines, but there was few crates that we had to bring in from New York, but there is no flight between Tokyo and uh, New York until end of June. So mm. we had to wait until yeah, early this month. And then earliest opening was, the 31st July. So that was like parallelly different things were going on. And uh, yeah, I thought I could have much more relaxed time <laughs> at home, but just went so quickly. <laughs> I mean, it was, it sounds like an incredibly networked experience, right? For this in reflection of like how, you know, suddenly everything did actually have to move online. And I think for the audience, it's, it's really worth seeing the MAM um, on, uh, online screenings. It's, it's such mm -hmm. a treat to see some of the screenings and you've got the Munira Al Sol, mm -hmm. which is going to be um, opening as well on the 31st. And so it's also those practicalities, because I know that you are also the president um, of the board, uh, president of the board of the International Committee for Museums and Collections of Modern Art. Mm -hmm. And you have been sort of active in kind of thinking about how these experiences will, will mm. sort of impact or um, affect the way that museums more generally are going to navigate these times. Mm -hmm. um, you, I think CMAM recently published safety guidelines actually based on the yes, work that yes. Maury has been doing, but also National Gallery Singapore and M plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we published that uh, guideline already in March and uh, something that Asian museums were trying to open already in March, but it just kept extended. But we shared that uh, experience with the uh, international colleagues. And uh, normally, CMAM board, we have 15 board members, and then normally we only meet three times a year. But uh, during this time, we were meeting very frequently and uh, really discussing how to approach to this issue and uh, what can CMAM do? And uh, we already uh, uh, announced three to uh, advocacy uh, letter and an open letter. So uh, it was quite, I must say that it's been very interesting to really question what museum should be doing now mm. and what is the role of the museum and what is the role of a contemporary art museum and what is the future? And all of these things, actually, I wanted to question to myself when I, I got this new position. But now whole world is on the same, uh, same platform that everyone mm. has to start from the beginning. Yeah. And I think which is a good thing. Absolutely. I mean, I wanted to sort of transfer that question of what is the role of the museum to the gallery? Because um, Junko, um, you know, we earlier we were talking and you said how when you sort of came back into the gallery space mm -hmm. and you just had this sort of renewed or revived um, mm -hmm. sense of appreciation for it. So I wonder if you could talk us through how you've navigated the gallery through these times. And I understand that you actually reopened on June 13th. Mm -hmm. um, so you've actually just opened your second show since yeah. reopening. So we opened on June 13. We closed at the end of February, I think. So it's pretty much five months. And the first people who came into the gallery were artists, which was really, really <laughs> nice. They really craved the experience of looking at artwork in a space. And we had discussions, what we did during the quarantine and how we're gonna move from here. But the fact is nobody really knows 
what's going to happen from here. Mm. And I'm not so sure if the gallery itself is safe for everybody. We don't do appointments because we only have small audience, but we do sanitizing and alcohol, masking, but we don't quite know what there is, but people do come in and without appointment, stroll by, and it's really a nice experience to have a bit very local feeling to the gallery, having the actual artwork in the space. And you actually, the show you, so the first show that you reopened with was Chiang Mai, uh, Tokyo, Chiang Mai, Tokyo, which mm -hmm. was a three person show, Udom Sak Pusanamis, Tavich Pern, and Rick mm -hmm. Ritir And now um, Sketching Ideas is a group show that actually includes work by artists that were created, um, by gallery artists that were created during quarantine. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Not only quarantine, but okay. it's pretty much about the ideas of what they've been working on. And during the quarantine, I think people started, the artists started to think about what they really want to do. And to show tits and bits of ideas was really, mm. really, and it's still on show. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, I mean, thinking about going back to Mami and how this moment really sort of raises that question of how does one go forward? What is the future? taking into account the impact that these, um, this, you know, pandemic has had. Um, Koji, I wonder how this experience has been for you. I mean, there was, uh, in the curatorial statement actually for Tokyo Chiang Mai Tokyo, um, it says that, you know, the artwork doesn't work without a relation <laughs> to the viewer. Um, yes. And so Koji, as a collector and patron, I mean, how have you experienced being a viewer at this time? Has your engagement to art changed? Has your thoughts, uh, you know, how, okay. how have your thoughts evolved, let's say? Yeah, maybe a few topics I can offer. One is the, as I mentioned, the, uh, uh, because uh, being a little bit old fashioned person, uh, this uh, online exhibition is not my uh, uh, taste. I, I like to see the works in the real world. Uh, that's okay. And the, also this, the, um, uh, Yokohama Trenale and so forth, uh, museums, uh, they now, um, the system of uh, appointments, you know, you need to make appointments in advance. I'm not used to that. <laughs> no. So, but I, 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 I do not object the system mm. because that is what, what, what we have to do. Now that the, um, the uh, one is that the artists, uh, the issue they have is the uh, income. Uh, because of the um, uh, this situation, Corona, uh, not uh, Corona, co COVID, <laughs> as you say, uh, the uh, less and less uh, work means income is less and less. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, there are some activities to to um, uh, have some um, donations and subsidies and so forth. Uh, there are many uh, projects to support. Uh, I, I shouldn't say just young, but the artists uh, who have um, having the difficulties. That's, uh, I, I think, one, one of the important things. Mm. Uh, the last one is that the, I, um, I had a dinner <laughs> with an artist. Uh, and the, he was, uh, he started talking about this uh, post-corona situation. Mm. Uh, in other words, uh, you know, he says, Mr. Naka, what do you think about this COVID situation? Ah, he says, COVID situation is, is, is not good, but the, uh, there is always an end. Uh, there is no um, uh, virus uh, things we continue for the uh, five years and 10 years, always a few months or a few years, and then that's done. Of course, uh, this can happen every, I don't know, three years, five years, 10 years, but I said, there's always an end. And he said then, so tell me, you know, what's going to happen for the uh, post-COVID uh, situation? I said, well, don't ask. I like to ask the same question to you because you're an artist and you are more sensitive to see the world than, let's say, me or than the general people. And he started talking about, uh, let's say, globalism, one, uh, world economy, capitalism and so forth. It's, it's, you can say it's a big talk, but it's important talk. 
I mean, there's a lot there, actually. And I wanted to sort of, you've raised a really important point, um, mm -hmm. first about support, which I mm -hmm. think I'd like to sort of open up to Mami and um, Junko as well, because, um, you know, the museum and the gallery are traditional, um, you know, platforms of support for artists, let's say. Um, and I wonder if you, and again, Koji, this is for you too, just to sort of zoom in on that point a little bit further. Um, have you noticed across, uh, from your perspectives, um, emergent forms of support, whether state or private? You know, I'm thinking about the um, Agency for Cultural Affairs, for instance, which, you know, since I believe since 2017 or 2018 has actively been trying to sort of um, engage more with promoting the Japanese art scene, mm -hmm. both locally and abroad. Um, yeah, I mean, have you seen new networks of support emerge? Um, new collaborations, have the relationships between the different sort of agents within the art world, let's say the artist, the gallery, the museum, have, have there been sort of um, responses already as I, I guess, and it relates to that question of um, what Mami had said and what Koji has raised, which is sort of moving towards the future or imagining a post COVID hmm. world. As I, far as the support is concerned, I think Mami, you are very familiar with the situation. I think uh, ACC for Cultural Affairs, Bunka Cho, uh, made a $5 million uh, uh, extra budget for supporting art. But unfortunately, most of the amount went to performing arts because mm. the uh, performing arts uh, industry was more targeted and uh, they, were, they were doing a lot of lobbying. And uh, contemporary world or community wasn't... Um, making that sort of uh, enthusiastic uh, lobbying. And then also we are probably, uh, always this um, politician said, they find it difficult to find uh, the whole body of artists because artists always works individually. And right. uh, uh, in, in contrast to the way that theater company or orchestra, all these people work in a company. So it's easier for government to grasp where they are. So uh, I thought uh, the necessity for contemporary art world is to have some sort of uh, safety net. And uh, if something happens, someone needs to grasp where they are and how many of them, what they are doing. So that's something we should start. And uh, uh, from that amount of extra budget, government decided to include uh, contemporary artists and then also freelancer in contemporary art mm. field which they could apply, I think, at $2,000 for immediate support. Mm -hmm. But that's the very basic and simple way of supporting. And then there are a few other uh, donation system that happened, but not so much. So I think that leaves us the major uh, uh, subject that we should be discussing as a contemporary community. Mm -hmm. And Junko, I mean, from the perspective, I mean, that's so we're going from a kind of very sort of public led mm -hmm. um, support system. And what about the private support system? I mean, from a gallerist perspective, what is... You know, I, we weren't able to get um, any support ready by the time by cultural affairs, so that many of the artists and the gallery itself went for government money. So mm -hmm. we got the government money and we were able to pay the rent artists were able to pay the rent, but in the end, that's not enough. So we had to have a whole network of our supporters, collectors, or people who are friends with the artists come in to help us. So what we do is sell our work to support the artist's life and the gallery, and networking became very important for us. Right, absolutely. And that sort of relates actually to how a gallery navigates um, a, a global economy in COVID times, I suppose. And I think with your gallery, you've been mediating this sort of local global, you work with different markets, you've, you've participated in, in international art fairs. I understand this year you did Art Basel online as well as Artissima and Taipei Dangai. Mm -hmm. So how has, I mean, how has, how, how has that experience been actually for you? Well, um, working with the international art fairs, even without COVID, we've been working with the collectors through the net, and that's what we've always been doing. So for me, it hasn't been so much um, difference of communication because 
it has to be really personal anyways. There is an online viewing system that many people could come in. Um, we haven't really challenged to do it, but I think the platform became really open and good at this moment too. Mm. Koji, how has your experience been with that as a sort of, um, in your engagement with galleries and with, and you said that you don't, uh, that online viewing is not for you, but have you been part of these kind of networks of communication and engagement? Um, you know, did you, have you found as a collector other forms of engaging with the art scene despite the disruptions? Right, right. Um... Uh, yeah, as I mentioned to you, um, I was trying to, do, you know, although the I said the uh, I hate the online things, but the, uh, <laughs> I I discussed with the artists um, what we can do, and the idea which came came up is the, you know, the online art festival. And I said that's a good idea, you know, let's let's discuss it in detail, and somehow. <laughs> We have some ideas, but the uh, it, it didn't go through. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, how about this? How about this? And so forth, so forth. And maybe uh, we don't have the um, mm -hmm, uh, what can I say? I don't. We don't have the know-how yet. Uh, so it's kind of a, a still talk. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, uh, you know, there are many people who are talking about so online art festival, online exhibition, online whatever it is. And the, uh, so. Uh, Sorry, right now it didn't go through, but in the mm -hmm. future that's going to that's going to be realized. Yeah, I wanted to sort of that when you said that you maybe you didn't have the know-how, but I think it it sort of reminds me of how Mami you talked about how the museum you sort of mobilized your team to sort of mm. redivert mm -hmm. your attention mm -hmm. towards mm. um the digital. And yeah. I think yeah, this like really opens up um a lot of questions actually as you said about the museum thinking about the museum as a nexus sort of between you know mm. local national regional global mm. however you'd like to sort of describe that spectrum um and i think that this is something that stars actually really touches on um one thing that struck me with the curatorial statement thinking about yokohama and you know the tradition that yokohama lies in as a sort of large-scale periodic exhibition that's designed to sort of creates an audience, um, you know, locally, nationally, regionally, internationally, and revive a, an area. Um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about STARS as an exhibition. Mm. Um, what was the curatorial rationale behind it? Um, because the curatorial statement specifically mentions the, the trend for these large scale, um, national scale, you described mm -hmm. it, international events. Yes, um, STARS, six contemporary artists from Japan to the world. I initially planned, of course, for 2020 Olympic year. So we were expecting all these inbound visitors who come to Japan during Olympic. And then we prepared much wanted artist show. And uh, one is that all these artists like Murakami and Nara Sugimoto, all these artists, if you're a foreigner coming to Tokyo, where can we see their works at, at uh, uh, permanent exhibition level? And it's actually very hard to find the place where everyone can see uh, these six artists. So we wanted to show them uh, somehow. And uh, then uh, we, so we, we wanted to show these six artists, but not because they are like star artists, but they wanted to look at how they became stars or how they became where they are now. So we decided to show the, uh, one of the artist works, which they made an uh, international debut, and uh, then uh, most recent works. And we combined these two as the two poles. And uh, we wanted to discuss uh, what made them stars and who gave this uh, critique. And mm. uh, so uh, we also have this very intense uh, biography with exhibition history, but also all these quotes from different people who, who, uh, uh, who acknowledged these artists at certain time and when and where. So uh, that's a combination of uh, exhibition part and then also archive. But then uh, we add another archive to show 50 selected so-called Japanese contemporary art exhibition abroad from 1950s to 2019. And you can see Japan has made enormous effort 
to try to promote Japanese art outside. Yeah. And, but not everything was successful. If you go and read these uh, reviews, the local reviews, because the value system has also shifted over the course of time. Mm. But also looking at all these 50 art uh, exhibitions, because those are framed as the Japanese contemporary exhibitions, we are always expect something Japanese from yeah. that show. While individual artists are not uh, necessarily talking about Japaneseness. So uh, uh, always these uh, national events come for such a time like an Olympic or an Expo or uh, when the economy of the, co the country is really booming. So it's a set of uh, scheme that our art and culture is being looked at from outside. And so we wanted to question how that relates to the uh, development of each artist. And uh, actually Koji and I, our same committee and uh, Agency for Culture Affairs, try to again promote Japanese contemporary art outside, but how to do it? Mm -hmm. There are many ways of doing it, but there's just raising so many questions. So uh, while showing this star artist, I wanted to also raise this question. Mm, and and I w I'd like to sort of ask Junko how you relate to that, because I think that sort of um, in your gallery program, I mean, the last two, sh two shows are quite representative of this. You're bringing, you know, artists from Thailand into Japan. This was the first time that Savavich, uh, excuse me, um, who was showing in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you follow that with Sketching Ideas, with it, which is an exhibition of um, contemporary Japanese artists. And I wonder how as a gallerist, you sort of mediate um, some of those uh, dynamics that Mami raises. Because I think, of course, um, what the STARS exhibition also raises is, you know, the, the creation, as you say, of these, um, these artists who've had these incredible international careers. I mean, it was the result of an international network, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you sort of saw that as well, I think, with the Gutai in, in many ways, that its, its reception was uh, very much built up in some ways in the Western uh, world. So I wonder, Junko, how do, you, how do you mediate that from the position of the gallerist, you know, being someone, being someone who is supporting um, mm -hmm. the careers of artists, their practices, but also engaging with that, that sort of global network that returns back to the context of the gallery itself as a site? It's always been my challenge to find a good partner for each artist. Um, if the Japanese gallery is on its own, the artist's career cannot be built. So in order for the artist to do shows in many different places, we need partners, we need connections, and to be look, the artist to be looked at to what they're thinking about. And I always felt the gallery itself is a, like a small platform or home for the artists, for them to show experimental things. Mm -hmm. And then I can bring them over to art fairs, talk to friends and colleagues, so that the artist's presence is shown somehow. So that's how I kind of operate in a way. And for the, as for the stars, they are stars. So <laughs> we still keep on. Um, but I mean, how do you find sometimes, I mean, depending on the market you're dealing with, how do you, like, I think Mami had mentioned uh, earlier, actually, when we were, before we started recording, um, you know, what, and this is a question that STARS raises, which is what is Japanese art? And I mean, do you ever have that problem thinking about the way that you, let's say, as you move between contexts and you move between markets and different audiences, how does that concept of Japanese art sort of apply Always. to your artists? Always. Uh, yeah. You know, when you present a Japanese artist, Many, many people would expect something Japanese out of the artist. But when you think about like some, somebody like On Kawara, you see the Japanese-ness in him, in the little box, paste it with newspaper. And that's Japanese too. So many different ways to experience Japan is there, but many people look for obvious, which is a problem too. Mm -hmm. and Japanese artists wouldn't escape from being Japanese artists anyways, but their experience of contemporary world, many, many, many things overlaps with different country. So how we figure this out is relying, uh, relying on artist talent, I think, in the end. 
And I think when you said, oh, sorry, mommy, please go. Yeah, go well, I just wanted to mention about the Onkawara because mm -hmm. there was a Japanese contemporary art exhibition at the Guggenheim in 1970. And he was invited by the curator, but he rejected because he, he didn't want it to be bounded by Japanese art. And in 94, when Alexander Monroe did a uh, Japanese post-war Japanese contemporary art show again at the Guggenheim, and then Onkawara was invited and again refused. So uh, I, I found that attitude, constant attitude, very interesting. Um, I love that idea of refusal, actually. I mean, I wonder, Mommy, if you could sort of expand on this, if how, you know, actually the question that I asked Junko about, you know, how, the projection of Japanese art, right? It's more of a projection of the viewer. Like, how do you see some of the artists, the six artists that you represent in stars, how have, that, how have they navigated that? I think everyone, of course, has a different attitude. But for instance, Hiroshi Sugimoto, who had made early career in the 70s, but he was, he was started to be known with his Dionama series, theater, and also seascapes. And uh, none of them really talks about Japanese-ness. Although probably aesthetics, some people might find it uh, then like uh, minimalism and uh, uh, Japanese aesthetic. But it's much later that he brings in his experience and the knowledge of the Japanese antiquities. So uh, it's, it's a very different uh, model. And then uh, in comparison to that, artists like Takashi Murakami, who really started as a Japanese artist, and uh, his uh, aim was to really bring in new way of being Japanese artists and bringing that context into a uh, Western context. Mm -hmm. So uh, he was very strategic from early 90s and uh, his way of making Super Flood as an exhibition and doing that trilogy, the three exhibition around the idea of Super Flood really nailed that idea down into uh, the international art community. So there are so many different ways of doing it or dealing mm. with it. Um, I wanted to sort of stick on that point of bringing it back to context because Koji, um, you have mentioned that, yes, we've mentioned that you're a patron of art-based Momoshima, um, mm. but also within that region, um, you were re until recently director of the Hiroshima Triennale, mm -hmm. um, which uh, sort of together with the Setoichi Triennial and Okayama Art Summit were kind of building, trying to build a sort of uh, turning the Sito Inland Sea area into an art region as a form of reviving uh, this area and bringing not only international audiences, but actually even national audiences to these places. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, IT Trinale, probably you know, there was uh, some uh, turmoil last year about uh, September, October, November time. Um, one is a threat uh, by uh, one of the uh, one truck driver says, well, I don't like this vision. Uh, if you don't stop, we, uh, we, we, I, I do something. So it's a big threat. Uh, that was a uh, uh, casing uh, in, in, the, uh, in case of IT Trenale. And from that, um, the uh, issue developed into the censorship. And the, that is the case uh, last year, uh, as far as IT Trenale is concerned, and this year, uh, being a director of the Hiroshima Trenale, uh, I faced the censorship issue again. And the, uh, I don't go into details because uh, then uh, we wouldn't run out of time. Uh, it canceled at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, uh, the essence of the cancellation, the administration, public administration's uh, cancellation due to COVID. But mm -mm. real issue is that it's a political issue, a censorship. And the, um, uh, well, from time to time we discuss that, uh, sorry to say Japanese artist, uh, but the, uh, uh, it, uh, as, as kind of um, uh, the general, this is general statement and the uh, uh, art works are less political. That's in general as a trend. And so if um, somebody makes the uh, works for the, uh, you have some uh, political uh, uh, elements, then sometimes it causes certain 
complaints, turmoil, whatever it is. Mm. And the, uh, uh, that is a headache in a sense, but the, uh, I say that this kind of a issue is good because without the issue, we don't discuss it. If the issues right. surface, we discuss at least. So uh, rather than being ignorant, I said, let's discuss it, you know, openly and publicly. And the, uh, so this IT Triennale uh, episode, as well as this Hiroshima Triennale things together, I think it's, uh, it, it, in, a, in a sense, it's not good, but in a sense, it's good for me uh, to, for the discussions. I, from what I understood from the Aichi Triennial, what was interesting for me as a sort of outside spectator, I mean, I went to see mm -hmm. the exhibition, um, is that it, you know, the exhibition was staked on the fact that this rise, this global rise of sort of nationalist politics, let's say, that's right. is not just a local or national experience. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a trend yeah. that's happening worldwide. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, of course, it's, as you say, these are conversations that have to happen, because I think with, for example, um, the stars exhibition what it shows through the the work of individual artists is that the, the national is also global right the national yeah. is or the it, essentially it just comes down to the artist as junko said and how the artist filters their realities um into work that we can all contemplate but actually on that note i mean um we did we have to turn to not we have to i mean it's lovely to have audience questions but there was one um member of the audience actually um let me just try and get her name so I can, Lucy Breton. And one of the questions that she asked actually was should Japanese art exhibitions be more politically engaged? But I wonder if we can kind of expand that question um, and ask what, would a, what does politically engaged art mean to you? Because I think that actually polit the political art can be many different things and people can be political in very different ways, particularly mm. in, the, in, the, in the art world, let's say, not just mm. visual art, but. So I wonder, I'm going to put this question to all three of you, actually. I think uh, I, wanted, I wanted to answer that question. Uh, maybe we can put it like a political art into politically, socially engaged art. So uh, the works that engage with those issues. And I went to see most recent uh, Chin Pom exhibition mm. because we're going to have Chin Pom solo first major solo exhibition next year. And uh, during COVID, they were using, within this uh, uh, empty Tokyo, they were using an empty billboard and then using all those large space and putting this, um, some kind of uh, substance that exports to make an old fashioned blueprint and then said Tokyo 2020. So it's of course, it's slogan for uh, uh, postponed Olympic, but also uh, they were taking a picture of this empty uh, society and then kind of ironical Tokyo 2020 uh, signage on an empty billboard. And uh, Chin Pom, of course, was in uh, IT Trinale uh, uh, Freedom for Speech mm -hmm. show and uh, but also known as a politically uh, sometimes problematic uh, the whole group of uh, young artists. But I thought this COVID experience probably changed their position and the circumstances. Because uh, when world is uh, healthy and happy and nothing seems not be happening, although there is always undercurrent, all these social issues are happening. But when artists reveal that part of the social layer, people feel it's uncomfortable. But now reality is so, so uh, problematic in all over the world. So I think everyone's sense of sensibility to the social structure and all these uh, vulnerable minority part of the societies on the uh, surface of the society now and uh, I think we need to be socially engaged or politically engaged more under post-COVID society. And then I felt that um, having a Chimpom exhibition next year is perfectly in time. And uh, I think the perception of the public might be slightly, hopefully, different from uh, what was happening in IT time. Mm -mm -mm. Um. Junko, what do you, and Koji, what are your thoughts? What do you think a politically engaged uh, 
art practice or exhibition practice? What does that mean to you? Yeah, Junko, Junko first. Oh, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> um, I believe artists are always political and socially engaged. And without that, they cannot make artwork. They cannot be sitting in a small world on his own, closed up in their studio. If they're contemporary artists, they have to be. And I always believe that artists are political, but they don't have to make political work in a way. Um, even if one makes an abstract painting, mm -hmm. it could be political as well. By being an artist is what I think. Mm. Koji, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, as I said, the um, <laughs> compared to, uh, let's say, Europe, US, or the uh, India, Southeast Asia, I believe we have a less <laughs> degree of politically engaged uh, artworks or the artists. And the, uh, I, I like to see that the uh, artists in Japan, I like to see them to challenge to many things politically, uh, social taboos, uh, global issues, uh, small or big, um, I like to see them. Uh, I like to see uh, them to do this uh, more and more. And the, uh, but the young generation, I don't know what's going to happen. They, they, uh, some people say young generations are less political. They're interested less uh, in the political things. Or, but I believe that some of the um, uh, people of the younger generations, I think they are quite interested in the global. Uh, issues and the uh, also the uh, political political issues. So I have a high hope. <laughs> mm -mm. Actually, that was another second part of Lucy Breton's question, which is how do you um, encourage younger generations to become involved in art? And I'm going to try and fit in a few more questions because there are some great ones. And there's one question here that could be related because it's um, from Saki Nakanishi. I'm so sorry, Nakanishi. I'm so sorry. Um, and she's asking, or he, I'm so sorry again, <laughs> it's all text-based. Um, what do you think about the best use of social media for galleries and museums in Japan to keep connected? And I think, Mami, this sort of relates to, Mam, you've been very active digitally. Um, and of course, as we know, the, the digital sphere is really the sphere of the digital natives, who are all of the younger generations who have grown up with this just being some part of their, you know, site of communication. So I wonder, do you feel that the younger generations need to be encouraged to engage in arts or are they already in engaging? Uh, most of our audience up, up to 80% uh, under 40 years old. So it's high percentage of young, young audience and they are well connected with social media. But for us, I think social media so far and then also a uh, new digital platform should not uh, take over the experience in the real world. So I was hoping to seek for the well-balanced relationship with the digital world and uh, the real world. And as uh, Junko mentioned at the earlier time, that uh, it's so different to see the, for instance, large installation by Li Yufan. It's so beautiful, but it's not possible just to see from uh, Instagram pictures. You have to bring your physical body. And then this whole experience made me realize that, oh, we have been looking at art, not only with the eyes, but as a whole body. And it's a physical experience. And then no sound or vibration or smell or some sort of tactile feeling of the wax. It doesn't come from this screen. So uh, there's always something that a museum or gallery can only do with this um, uh, provide by providing real experience. But mm -hmm. uh, social media and also website, all these digital media, of course, that's not avoidable in our future. So we just need to find a good balance and who makes, uh, who does better works mm -hmm. by using that medium. Yeah, and I think that relates to this sort of fragmentation that this pandemic has kind of created. And we have one question here from Judith Stradling that I think um, Junko is your field of expertise. The question is asking, um, do you think that the art market will be more localized now with Jap Japan now that international travel is difficult? But I think this relates to actually, you know, what Mami has raised, which is 
the way that the, the sort of um, international market, let's say, has moved online. And there have been these kinds of these initiatives to replicate that the old now we can say all the old way of of being global mm. i think i'm happy to be local but as a content it has to be international so we will always be on the net you know we always do communication through sns and internet but to have a presence of the artwork they have to come to us to see or maybe learn about the artists and see the artwork elsewhere. But I think I totally agree with Mommy that you really have to experience the space in order to learn about it. Or maybe in the future, artists themselves would create some platform for the digital so that we have a new experience of their work. We cannot catalog them. If I were to do the digital for the artist, it would just become a catalog of the world, you know? So I think it could be new ways coming in the future. Yeah. Mm. And I wanted to sort of throw that to you, Koji, thinking about um, art-based Momoshima, because, you know, these initiatives like this, and again, we're coming back to Yokohama as well, is that they really depend on the movement of people towards the, the space, to the site, to experience the art. So um, there is a question here, uh, I mean, Juan Gabaron is asking, is the new normal reversible um, and what, uh, or, and what will, what new things will, what new things will remain? So I suppose the question is, you know, how, what will the new normal look like actually, you know, as you're navigating it? And, and of course, this is bearing in mind that art depends, as you've all said, so much on the physical experience, the experience of being in space with work. Um, how will this, how do you imagine this is going to change things? And I'd like to start with our base Momoshima and it more generally the question of the triennial Hiroshima, let's say, or Yokohama, it's how we started and we can sort of think from there and move well, on to the museum and gallery. Okay, Stephanie, you touched on the many subjects. So <laughs> let, let me uh, answer or let me make comments um, uh, on the two or three separate uh, mm. subject. One is that the market, um, you know, like, like myself, I don't see the market uh, within this two months, three months, four months. I like to see the market in two years, three years, four years. So uh, it, it, right now you, 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 you stay a little bit calm and uh, once this is done, this COVID uh, period is over. Uh, of course, I look for the international, you know, artist artworks. So that's one. Two is that the, uh, as Junko said, the uh, digital things co for the communication, that's important. And the, I think that we're gonna use the, uh, this, the uh, web, web and Zoom and so forth more and more, um, uh, even after the COVID time. That's my, my prediction. And because uh, it's convenient, it's convenient rather than, you know, the uh, go to the airport and this and this and so forth. So uh, this uh, thing, as far as communication is concerned, remains, and I think we're going to do more. And the uh, the last thing I'd like to say is that the uh, this COVID time is, I, I think, I hope, turns out to be a good thing for the artists. They feel something out of this, as the uh, uh, Mami uh, talked about the Chimpom, um, the the, uh, the exhibition. Uh, not just not only the chimpanzee, but other artists. Of course, they feel that you know this um, in in the economic economic term we call a black swan. This COVID, mm -hmm. and uh, you, know, you know what this 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 black swan is, and what is a uh, let's say economically capitalism and the also the political issue um, the, uh, right now and the you know presidential uh, election in the United States and so forth so forth. They gonna see some impact and after this post uh, covid i hope they're going to uh, come up with wonderful wonderful artworks i think this is going to happen and also i mean does this also relates to new practices right because i think going back to that local global dynamic i mean we're all kind of experiencing this together and no one really knows what's going to happen next right, um, right. 
there's there is that one question that Juan Gabaron also asks is how are you preparing uh, for a possible new scenario of new future waves of COVID and I suppose Mami this relates to um, you know the very practical things that you're working on now which is what is the safety guidelines for a museum what is your uh, what is your responsibility to your audience um, but also how is this going to actually change the practice of the museum itself Probably uh, one of the biggest challenge for us is uh, if artists can still travel and uh, particularly contemporary art relies on artists own presence by installing the work and then also being present to give a talk and all this uh, participating in these programs. So uh, for the future exhibitions, we are planning two uh, scenarios. One is artists would come, and the second is we have to find a way to install everything without artists' presence. But there's, I feel still that uh, that will lack the huge energy of the show, particularly mm -hmm. at the opening, because for us, the artist's presence is a huge energy for everything. And, uh, but also international uh, touring exhibition that uh, because of this COVID, all of the museums are questioning is it uh, relevant for us to carry around all these number of crates all over the world? And so many volume of the works have been shipped around the globe. But for uh, environmental uh, perspective, is it relevant in the future? Mm -hmm. So uh, if we are to reduce the number of our own flights, but also uh, shipping of the works, the physical works, we have to look at how do we talk about art without physical works, but also we might be looking at more in a, a local region, but not only talking about Tokyo, but uh, also probably Asia and the Pacific. Mm -hmm. This uh, closer international region becomes quite important, I think. Yeah. So uh, the exhibition doesn't have to travel throughout the world, doesn't have to go to America and Europe, but I think uh, in the same time zone, it's easier for our Zoom conference too, that uh, uh, same time zone, Asian Pacific, will be a very important new art community in the future. Absolutely. And, you know, saying that makes me think about the viewers from New York who've signed in at seven in the morning for that. So thank you, everyone who joined us from there. Actually, um, Tricky Lopa is asking if the STARS exhibition will travel. Nope. No. Okay, got you. Um, and so Junko, I thought it would be good to um, actually wrap it up, um, but sort of coming back to the gallery and thinking, you know, you know, responding to what Koji and Mami have just said, you know, what, how, what are your thoughts for the future? How are you preparing? Um, and do you think that some of these changes uh, are going to permanently affect the way that the gallery operates? The future. <laughs> <laughs> we are barely surviving at this moment. Yeah. Yes, it's very, for me and for our artists that we work with, I'm content of what we have here. But to keep going on, doing art fairs, going through this time, it's very, very difficult and challenging time. In a way, how do we go back to the art fairs? How do we keep on paying the rent? How do we mount the show? You know, it's... I'm just so happy to be surviving. Yeah, this absolutely. Mm, yeah. It's a very difficult time for everybody. Mm. But mm, I still believe the gallery is like artist's home base in a way. Mm -mm. It makes me very proud. All right. So I'm going, actually, there's one more question from the audience. And I think this will be a really nice one to put to all of you just to finish up because you've given us so much of your time. Thank you so much. Um, Ken Taylor from Canada is asking, um, how has, well, the general question is, how do you think that the art community will capture and write this unique part of history? Um, and maybe I can sort of reformulate that question to how do you imagine, if you imagine yourself in the future that we, that seems so <laughs> unimaginable right now, um, and you were to look back on this time, I mean, what would you think are one of the, what, like one of the key takeaways um, that has emerged for you in this moment? Mm. I, I think for the museum sector, I think it's a great moment to change the uh, 
uh, all these uh, globalized art museum system, partly I already mentioned about the international touring of the exhibition. Is it necessary to actually to tour that long and in that scale? And uh, for the sustainability of the museum sector, we were discussing the idea of sustainability, we talk about uh, environment and uh, also more green and all this uh, idea, but also financial model for the museums. Some system is so vulnerable and a lot of uh, staffs uh, laid off and uh, had to leave the job, particularly in a non-profit organization. So we need to see how we could find a more sustainable uh, management system. And uh, we have to uh, uh, also look at different ways of uh, sustainability being more inclusive and uh, more uh, equality. And lots of questions have been raised. But I hope that this COVID had changed if you, we look at from the future, uh, this incident, the whole world pandemic would change the art community into a better way. Mm. So our grandchildren say, oh, that was a time that our art community changed in a better way. Mm -hmm. Junko, what are your thoughts? Mm. I also hope there'll be a better way. In a way, galleries are supported by private funding, right? And it's the time to keep connecting with people, networking with the people you have known in a better way. So I think if we survive together this time, our friendship and connection will grow stronger, which is a really wonderful thing for our community, I think. Mm, In a absolutely. way, you know, you think about the colleagues think, doing the similar thing, and we strive together. And to suffer this moment together, to do it not only to make money, it's really good for our situation, I think. Yeah. And Koji, we will, I guess you get the last word here. How, would, how do you think you'll look back at this time? Okay. Uh, I, 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 I hope you don't mind the, uh, my saying things a little bit more philosophical. Uh, you know, this uh, uh, COVID period that probably, you know, in, in Tokyo, in Japan, there is a second wave we are going through right now. And the second wave is quite uh, uh, big or larger than what I, what I expected. Uh, so people are uh, you know, a little bit concerned about this COVID. And the, uh, now I'm talking to my friends and artists and so forth. And the, this COVID things um, may ask us to rethink about what is important in your life. Well, is it a you know, nice restaurant or the expensive wine and so forth, so forth. And the uh, you know, people talk about it, and sometimes meeting people, relationship is more important than I said. I, I don't say the wine, but the uh, you know. So the order of importance in your mm. life is uh, changing a little bit. That's kind of uh, my viewpoint. Absolutely. Well, I think that's a a great point to end on, which is for all of us to think about what's important. <laughs> <laughs> Art, of course. Um, yeah, so I just want to thank you all so much. Um, thank you for your generosity in this conversation and thank you to everyone who has um, connected to listen to this conversation as well. And of course, thank you to our Basel for hosting it. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>